Good afternoon. I'm here to talk to you about my experiences living near a wind farm at Cape Bridgewater in Australia. Uh, uh, Cape Bridgewater is on the southern coast of Australia, uh, at the bottom of Victoria. I participated in the Cape Bridgewater Acoustic Study in cooperation with Pacific Hydro and six other residents. I've been medically diagnosed with hyperacusis following many um, acoustic shocks at the wind farm and there's ongoing problems which haven't been resolved by either the operators, the regulatory authorities or anyone. Uh, these are some images of Cape Bridgewater looking across the bay and the headland of Cape Bridgewater, the village with some of the turbines in the background. So this wind farm was built in 2008. There's 29 turbines of two megawatts. Uh, they surround our house on the western and northwestern side. The house is made of uh, solid limestone with a tin roof and wooden floor, so it's very solid. Uh, when the wind farm was built, we had no, no prior knowledge of health or acoustic impacts. I've been uh, disturbed by the wind farm since it's been built, and we've been complaining for a long time. This is a diagram of our house. It's number 88 in the acoustic study. As you can see, we're right near the southern section of the wind farm. Uh, the black dots are houses throughout the district. Our house is that little white speck in the middle of those trees and the turbines extend for quite some distance beyond that image. Our trees surround our house so we can't see the turbines from either our front door or the bedroom windows. I'm not going to read all this out so if you'd like to read, read it that would be good, thank you. Uh, one thing I will say is that I've been medically advised to leave our house due to the impacts. So we've been gone two and a half years. We've had uh, two other acousticians come and take measurements in our house and they have confirmed the existence of noise and the, the impacts on us. So Pacific Hydro eventually acknowledged that that there were problems. Uh, there was a screech which they um, attributed to the, the turbine hubs. So that was how, through a consultation process, we were able to get Stephen Cooper to come and do the study at Cape Bridgewater. The owners wanted to restore our lives to its quality before the wind farm, but they haven't done so. This is a picture of our kitchen and some of the monitoring equipment that Stephen had set up. As you can see, there are lots of leads running through the house. So this is on the eastern side of the house, furthest from the turbines. There are also equipment on the western side of the house in our bedroom and outside. And that was there for seven weeks. We actually vacated the house for a couple of days in order not to add further sound to the instrumentation. Contrary to some claims in the public domain, there are more than just six people being impacted by the wind farm. The budget and limitations imposed by Pacific Hydro on the Cooper study restricted it to just six people. There were more people in being impacted. We did ask for medical and sleep studies to be conducted concurrently, but Pacific Hydro refused. Um, I have the ability to sense the turbines without actually seeing them. I don't hear them. During the study, we were making one to two hourly observations into diaries, and then those observations were compared to the data that Stephen was collecting and, and that was also compared to the operational data provided by Pacific Hydro. 
the main finding of the Cape Bridgewater study was that there was a link between the sensations the residents were feeling and when the, the turbines were powering up and powering down, when depowering in high wind strengths. Now, I'd just like to make it clear that the sensations I feel are not due to water moving in the cabins under the Cape. It wasn't a broken down uh, windmill up the road. It wasn't wind in the trees. I don't actually hear the wind in the trees when I'm inside the house. It's not the nocebo theory and it's not the illusory truth belief. I was sensing something that others in the house and perhaps in the area weren't detecting. So I bought a set of Newton's balls because I knew what I was feeling, even though other people couldn't confirm it. The ball started moving. So that was a visual sign of what I was actually feeling. So at the end of the acoustic study, Pacific Hydro said there'd be no further steps to be taken to resolve the issues. They wouldn't change any of the operations at the wind farm. They wouldn't shut any of the turbines down. They re rejected our complaints of the past six years and no efforts were made to assist us. I have a hearing impairment. I've had this for 25 years. It's a bilateral low tone sensorineuro loss and it was due to a virus um, this is not a common hearing loss. Usually people can hear low pitch sounds, but I'm unable to. Um, I now experience a high pitch squeal, a low rumble and sensations and ear pain only since the wind farm's been built. I've been prescribed sleeping tablets, anxiety medication, and I've undertaken cognitive behavioural therapy but none of that helps with the head and ear pain or any of the other symptoms. Which leads me to discuss Dr. Leventhal. He's made a number of claims about me and people who are hearing impaired. I'd like to say that Dr. Leventhal has no access to the number or nature of acoustical health complaints I've made to my doctors, the health or planning authorities. He can't assess my physical or mental state. He hasn't met me and yet he makes public statements about me and people like me. He's not my GP, he's not my psychologist, he's not my specialist, he's not an acoustician. He hasn't assessed me and he should have stop misrepresenting my experiences and the experiences of the deaf community living near wind farm. Now, there's been some factually incorrect statements that the Cape Bridgewater wind farm is audible and that we only get sensations and symptoms when we hear the turbines. I don't hear the turbines, but yet I have sensitisation from the exposure. He keeps saying that I can see and hear the turbines, but I can't yet I can predict with 100% accuracy what's happening at the wind farm just from what I sense. He's generalised about my deafness and as you can see from the following audiograms that it's not true that I can hear low frequency noise. Um, complaints have continued for six years without resolution leading to stress to none happy complainants. That's true. We're not very happy because nothing's been resolved. Um, there's been accusations that Mr Cooper has said our distress is from infrasound. He's never said that. I don't hear what other people hear. I sense the pulses and vibrations. And at a level four or five, when the impacts are worse, I'm desperate for those impacts to stop. And there's nowhere I can go within the house to escape 
those sensations. They're not linked to audible noise, but they are linked to turbine operations, including when those turbines are stopped and stationary in the wind. I'll let you read this. <laughs> and I can just say that it's not because of the presence of the wind turbines that we're stressed. We actually supported the wind farm coming to the area. Now, Mr Leventhal has said cognitive behavioural therapy reduces disturbance from noise through a process of desensitisation and can improve sleep and quality of life. Well, I've undergone CBT and let me show you, it hasn't helped me at all. So to blame our problems on a truth belief is a cruel deflection from the truth. So things like or well, being uh, marginalised by the nocebo effect, by being told that we're too hostile, um, or that stress from just the presence of the turbines causes our, our health impacts, that's not true. Um, there's a new cross-sensitisation to other noise sources are now being impacted by traffic noise. We've undertaken the... Um, Stephen Cooper's recent study, which he discussed earlier, and we can sense the pulses in his room without having any idea when the pulsing's occurring. This is a graph of strong amplitude modulation that corresponded to sensation five in my diary. And we just ask that people recognise that People don't leave their homes for no reason. We support the Wind Turbine Working Group and we need authentic treatment and preventative measures put in place. So I request that you examine the Cape Bridgewater study and support the work of the Turbine Working Group. Thank you. One quick question. Um, what do you think causes your, um, your discomfort? What do I think causes my discomfort? Amplitude modulation. When, well, I'm feeling waves going through the ground, the house is vibrating. Those vibrations cause me to wake up throughout the night. I have things called a heart jump. So maybe the startle reflex, I have headaches, which I don't have when I'm not near low frequency noise.